Not unlike Britney Spears, Bynes was spotted acting strange in public places, wearing bizarre clothes and even shaving her hair. Since then, things got even weirder, when as she began posting tweets and videos displaying increasingly worrying behavior. Her tweet requesting rapper Drake to murder her vagina confused many as our odd choice of words may be revealed an unhealthy relation with her own sexuality. The Sour Patch video freaked out quite a few people as it is not only indicative of someone that is not well, it almost looks as if it's a MK Ultra programming glitch. Amanda Bynes' metamorphosis from a promising child star to a bizarre woman with worrying behavior is yet another example of how the MK Ultra entertainment industry messes up the minds of those who grew up within it. While most media sources cite drugs or mental problems as causes of her erratic behavior, these are only symptoms of the true issue here. Bynes is yet another former child star going through a MK Ultra programming meltdown. Bynes began her acting career at the age of 10 and quickly obtained her own show at Nickelodeon. From there she followed the unfortunate pattern of going from a star admired by children to a barely legal sex bomb to then turn into a bizarre tabloid celebrity with erratic behavior. Is that pattern familiar? Look at the paths taken by the other products of Hollywood mind control such as Britney Spears and Lindsay Lohan, and see if you see the similarities. Recent selfies show Bynes with a half-shaved head. Britney Spears shaved her head also during her meltdown. She's showing increasingly revealing clothing, and her eyes are disturbingly vacant. Like many other child stars, Bynes started as a beautiful, down-to-earth girl with eyes that convey intelligence. When she reached legal age, mass media undressed her and told the world, hey, she's not a minor anymore. It is now safe to sexualize her. How many child stars went through that process? How many led great and healthy lives afterwards? Not many. From a child star to sex bomb to loose cannon, Amanda Bynes is going through a pattern that is consistently repeated in the entertainment industry. How come these starlets go through the exact same stages? It is because they went through the same school, industry mind control. single, Love Me, featuring Drake and Future, appears to be another rap song about easy girls. The symbolism of the video, however, adds a more sinister dimension to the song. It directly defers to monarch mind control, specifically kitten programming, and even refers to its techniques. We'll look at the symbolism of Lil Wayne's Love Me. At first glance, Love Me appears to be yet another song where rappers brag about how many hoes they got. While some might shake their heads at the unoriginality of the subject matter, others might shake their heads at the way women are portrayed in the video. However, I'll add another reason to shake your head. Love Me refers to the most terrible practice on earth, monarch mind control. In short, beta programming is 
used to create brainwashed sex slaves. The video contains all of the possible symbolism relating to kitten programming, and it also emphasizes the slave status of the woman in the video. Lil Wayne's girls are literally locked in cages and depicted as animals. They are also shown in situations that subtly allude to the actual MK torture techniques that used to traumatize slaves and cause them to disassociate from reality. Of course, everything is portrayed in a cool and fashionable manner to make sure young people embrace all of this without even realizing it. Let's look at the meaning of the video. The many close-up shots of girls during the video all somehow allude to an aspect of kitten programming. Here are some of them. This model has a feline print on her face, which is used in mass media to refer to kitten programming. To make sure you get the message, she also has cat eyes and is licking her paw. At this point, the video is basically screaming out kitten programming. Licking a blade is maybe sexually dangerous, but also refers to the mix of inhibiting lust and physical abuse involved in kitten programming. This headgear is reminiscent of BDSM, but is also a way to represent a slave's mind being trapped and controlled by a handler. Kittens are trained to truly embrace their state of servitude. This model appears to be loving her chain very much, a little too much. This model has a huge butterfly covering one of her eyes, which is probably the most blatant reference to monarch mind control in the video. In the video, Little Wayne somewhat plays the role of the handler, where he's basically in control of these memorized women. Here he is in a bedroom that is full of water, with women swimming in it. Aside from the fact that this water will probably cause a lot of water damage in that room, it is also a way to show that these slaves are literally out of their element. One of Little Wayne's first rhymes was, These hoes love me like Satan man. We then see a quick flash of this image. Little Wayne as Satan Man. This line is perplexing for a few reasons. Why do these hoes love him like Satan? Is he implying that they were loving Satan to begin with? Whether it is intentional or not, this line has profound implications in the realm of monarch programming, as slaves are often victims of SRA, satanic ritual abuse are made to participate in the traumatic rituals where female slaves become brides of Satan. Sometimes MK handlers tell their slaves they are Satan in themselves while they are abusing them to further trauma. Soulless, like an MK handler. The last part of this video is also somewhat disturbing. It begins with kittens entering a white room. They move like cats. You know, like kitten programming. They then reach a bathtub full of red liquid, or blood, if you will. And for no apparent reason, they make a big mess. The girls are all covered in blood, rolling around in it. And, uh, is that supposed to be hot? Who in their right mind would do that? Nobody. But these women are not in their right mind. Once again, this scene subtly refers to an actual monarch practice that is used to traumatize slaves and engender dissociation. In searching for traumas to apply to little children, the program has found that these natural phobias, which occur in most people from birth, will work wonderful to a split mind. Along this line, the following are samples of trauma done to program slaves. While the real life implications of the scene is horrible, everything is nevertheless portrayed in a cool and stylized manner, where the models keep doing sensual faces to the camera which in real life these faces would be completely distorted with pain. Like many other pop songs, 
Little Wayne's Love Me has a simple surface meaning, meaning him not caring about haters as long as his hoes love him. But the music video adds a very sinister underlying meaning. There is an undeniable pattern of re reoccurring symbolism in his popular culture, and Love Me definitely adds to it. Indeed, in this video, all of the symbolism that is associated with kitten programming, the one-eyed symbolism, the butterflies, the animal prints, all represented in this video, along with various references to real-life monarch programming practices. While each individual element could have been present in this video to symbolize something else that, that other than MK Ultra, then if so, please tell me. What are the odds that all of these symbols being randomly inserted in one? It is not about pointing out single instances of random symbols, but understanding each piece as a whole and the hidden realities it refers to. One of these hidden realities is monarch programming, one of the occult elite's favorite practices. One that can be traced back to what Springmeyer calls generational satanic families. While rap has always had a healthy dose of macho bravado, Love Me is a deformation of this tradition, as it adds a sick, perverted twist to it, including all allusions to violence, abuse, and even torture. As years go by, this pushing of the envelope becomes more apparent as the original culture around hip-hop is slowly but surely becoming Illuminati-friendly. Like many other movements in society, hip-hop has co-opted by the elite to be used as a tool to indoctrinate young people. Are there still real rappers out there? Maybe. But you'll probably never see them on the Grammys.